So uh, before we get started, I need to read this disclaimer. Trading futures in foreign exchange or margin carries a high level of risk, and it may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to trade the foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your monetary objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your deposited funds, and therefore, you should not speculate with capital you cannot afford to lose. Bottom line is, you should not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Okay, so... Um, wanted to talk a little bit tonight about what all these numbers mean right here. What are they really? And, uh, well, you can see they're definitely something to these numbers because they, why is it that they turn right exactly at these numbers? Um, sure, we never know what number, when you look at these larger time frames like this, you never really know which number it's going to turn at, but it at least gives you a target to focus when you see, especially when you see an overextended TDI, like we see right here, out of the blue volatility band. And this is a daily time frame. So, you know, you can see that it took roughly one, two, three, going on the fourth day before a hard reversal. Same thing down here. Okay, one, two, three, four, and then a hard reversal. If you notice something really interesting when you look at these, okay, uh, candles, so that you, you end up seeing big pin bars to the low, okay, and big pin bars to the high, okay, when you can definitely see that price is having an issue, uh, price action is having an issue at these levels. So, really, what do all these numbers mean? Okay, well, what happens with the quarter series is, okay, the quarter series was a, a system that was developed by Ilyan Yotov uh, about 20 years ago. Actually, Jesse Livermore started using these numbers back in the early uh, 1910s, 1920s. He knew these mathematical price points in his head. And he, as a young boy, and I'm just going to mute everybody. Um, as a young boy, he used to work in the bucket shops. Uh, I'm muting everybody here. Sorry, guys. Um, he used to work in the bucket shops of these stock exchange traders, where, where uh, back in you know back in the early uh, days of the stock market, you know, they didn't have you know any kind of an electronic system. In fact, they didn't even really have any kind of a ticker tape system. But what they did have was these big boards that they put up on a wall, okay, and they'd have these little uh, shops, like little coffee shops, right, like little, uh, little you know, drinking parlors and stuff where all the traders would come in. And the they did have telephones, and, and they were able through a network of uh, telephones throughout the country, they were able to pass on price of one currency like U.S. Steel or, uh, you know, uh, in later years, uh, General Electric, right? And all they ever saw was the numbers. They didn't see candles. They didn't see any price action. They didn't see any of that. All they, all they, all they saw were numbers on this board, like, you know, uh, U.S. Steel was uh, twenty dollars, twenty point one two five, right, or twenty one point two five, right. Well, what he did was he was able to recognize sp specific price points in a mathematical algorithm, okay, where he, he found that price would typically reverse, and when everybody was still buying because they expected it to keep going up. He was looking for reversal because he had saw, he was counting the days that you know it held the level, and um, and when it got to a certain point, he'd, he'd either sell or when it got to a certain point that he bought bought 
right? <laughs> now, basically, it's just a mathematical algorithm. And it's if you were to take, like, say, for instance, a U.S. dollar, one U.S. dollar, okay, of 100 points, okay, you could break down a one U.S. dollar into four quarters of 25 cents each, right? Um, you could break down a $100 bill into four, four uh, $25 bills, right? That's 250 points, basically. The quarter theory takes a 1,000 pip range and breaks it down into four quarters of 250 pips each. So you could look at this like, okay, this is a, this is the uh, 1,000 points. It's 250 points. So it's 200. It's 1,000 points from here to here, and it's 250 points, okay, from here to here, and then another 250 from there to there. Another one from there to there, another one from there to there. Now, there's also other numbers in between these channels of 250 points. You have the center point here, which is actually um, one halfway the distance between this large quarter point and this large quarter point. So if we if there's 250 pips from here to here, it's got to be 125 pips from here to here, right? From from this point here. This point here is 125 pips. And from this point here to this point here is 125 pips. Okay. Then what we have is this area, these blue lines, which are called the hesitation zones. Now, the hesitation zone, okay, is a number of pit, uh, points of 75 points, okay, above and below each one of these large quarter points you can see there's one there 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 and then of course there's one there now in theory with the quarter theory if if a a pair makes and hits a major round number like this number here 14000 okay and it starts its rise okay each additional quarter point that it rises, it makes it, it's, it's, it's harder to break. So it's harder to break this one than it is to break this one. It, it's, it's, it's been struggling to break this one, okay? But I can guarantee you that when it gets up to this one here, it'll be harder to break this one than it does to break this one, right? But there's plenty of pips in between each one of these channels. It's because you can see here, here is the, uh, pound yen. Now, pound yen, I mean, it's just been kind of not really doing a whole lot uh, for the last couple days, but it has been just consolidating in a tight channel, okay, roughly of about, oh, uh, well, seven. I, I mean, I don't even have to draw, you know, I mean, everybody has to go like, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take it there with my crosshairs, and I can see that's Resistance up here, this is support, it's 120 pips. Well, I can tell just by looking at this, is if this is 75 pips from there to there, and it's 75 pips from there to there, I could just look at that and say, okay, if 75 and 75 is 150, it's roughly oscillating at about 150 pip range. What the beautiful thing about the quarters theory, and when you understand the, uh, the value of these numbers, and what they mean, okay, which I'll go over in a minute, you can take advantage over and over again, okay, when the pair, ha like you can see, this pair has been rising, it's trying to rise, still rise. You know, the first real tough level of resistance, uh, if it does happen to break, okay, a uh, large quarter point, okay, is this number the large the hesitation zone which is 145.75 so if you th if you thought outside of the box and you knew that this is you know you had these numbers and you knew what they meant and you knew that when a pair rises okay that the the this area here which they call the hesitation zone that and if you go back and you did your research and you saw how many times 
a pair broke a large quarter point when it was rising and 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 stalled out at this hesitation zone you know th there's absolutely no reason why you can't play these numbers and these bounces and make a nice 50 to 75 pips in between these channels back and forth until the pair starts to move okay now there's many, many examples of that. There's another one here. I want to take a look at the uh, Pound Aussie. Pound Aussie's, uh, let's see here. So here's the, here's the Pound Aussie. Okay, look at this now. I mean, for, I mean, all last, what was it, all last week, Pound Aussie was rising. Everybody kept thinking, gosh, this thing's just going to keep on going. But look, it had a hard time breaking this hesitation zone. It couldn't close the day, okay, above this hesitation zone. And then it started to fall. Well, if you had been paying attention, knowing that as the pair is rising, okay, as it comes up, you can expect some kind of a reversal at the first attempt to break the hesitation zone. So here's an example. Okay, um, well, here's another couple of examples, actually. Uh, go back here. This is a four-hour time frame. Okay, so here we have a reversal right here, and the pair rose roughly 250, almost 300 points until it bounced off this center point, and then it came back down, and it broke this large quarter point, but guess what held it? The hesitation zone. Now, the hesitation zone really only comes in play, okay, if a pair has previously broken a large quarter point, the next number is the, num is the hesitation zone, which you should be paying a whole lot of attention to. And I know it's really difficult when you start throwing all kinds of indicators, moving averages, and all that stuff, right? You know, there's, you know, if we were to try to look at the TDI and say, oh, God, the TDI is overextended, or is it overextended? There's a little hook, but guess what? You know, it's still above the 32. It's not telling us anything. If it was way down here, that'd be another story, but right here it's not. But we know that the power of this hesitation zone, and as it cycles down, we can expect reversal. So what do we do? Well, this is a four-hour time frame. And so this is about a two or three day time frame. Why not just buy the bounce off these numbers? Hide your stop loss right behind the numbers. We know that a pair is either trending or it's oscillating. It could be trending on a larger time frame, okay, like the daily, but it could be oscillating on a smaller time frame like the four hour, right? A, pair's, a pair always moves and then it consolidates. It moves and it consolidates. When it's consolidating, it'll take, it'll consolidate in a nice tight range. There's one there. Okay. Uh, here's one here. Right. So if you get in the habit of watching for reversals at these price points, now if we go back here, we can go here to the that's the one hour or the four hour time frame. The, the uh, let's look at the uh, one hour time frame, okay, and we can see that I mean for all day. Let's see, this is Friday, this is Monday. What's it doing? Chop, chop, chop. Okay, well, you know, why not set a pending order, or when it gets up here, set a set an order for a a buy ten pips below this number. And uh, a uh, with a stop loss, uh, 10 pips above this number. So you got a 20 pip stop. Well, if you're wrong, no big deal. You you get stopped out for 20 pips, right? But if you're right, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's if it's 50, so if it's 75 pips. I mean, just looking at these numbers here. Okay, I can just look at these numbers. And I know it's 75 pips from here to here. And then it's 125 pips 
from here to here. So how much is there between each one of these channels? 50 pips. So it's 75, 50, 50, 75. Okay, that's 250 pips. So easy 50 pips by setting pending orders right up against these numbers with tight stop losses above it. If you're wrong, you're only going to lose 20 pips. But if you're right, you're going to make, well, how many would we have made each time here? 75, there, there's uh, 75, there's 50, there's so there's 125 pips right there. Okay, so this last time we got up here, okay, the center point, okay, pending order, 10 pips, stop above, right? How much did we make? Well, we made another 100 pips, right? Especially when you're stocking a pair, okay, you should be paying attention to these number price points because they hold, I mean, everything, the, all other indicators create their moves based off of, off of the movement of the, the candles within a chart. Every single indicator there is out there, pretty much all of them, except for like Heikinoshi candles. Somebody actually called me out on that one. Heikinoshi candles aren't lagging. Okay. The point is, is that all other indicators, whether they're moving averages, TDI, MACD, Fibonacci's, I mean, everything, okay, creates a signal based off of the movement of the candles on a chart. But what what contains the price? What what stops the movement of the candles within the chart? Well, it's the numbers. So doesn't it make more sense instead of throwing all kinds of fancy indicators on your charts and, you know, trying to read between the tea leaves? Why not just play the bounces off these numbers? Set pending orders, right? If you happen to be up, instead of waiting for a second leg M or W or this or that or another thing, why not just set a pending order 10 pips below this number with a stop loss 10 pips above. That's a 20 pip stop. Great risk reward, right? But look, this pair has been rising for a long time. Guess what? It couldn't break the hesitation zone. And now it's starting to cycle down. How far down will it go? Well, only the shadow knows, really. Uh, I mean, we'd still have a fairly good uh, uptrend, right? Um, but it's good, you know, playing the channels like that, okay, are good for 50, 75, 75 pips, right? Easy. So now, so that's basically the issue with the quarter series. It's real simple. I mean, and if you think about it logically, okay, as what I like to say, and I'm not paying attention to the chat, but I guess I better. Okay, so um, can everybody hear me? Let's see here. Avalo says he can't hear me. Everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Somebody please type yes. Okay, thank you. God. Last time that happened, I talked for 10 minutes and nobody said they couldn't hear me. I had to start over. But... If you think about it, and I'll just tell you why I think that these numbers are so important. Okay. When you have millions and millions and trillions of dollars floating around in the Forex, pretty much all the movement in the Forex is controlled by big banks and computers, right? Um, Why do you think the price just turns on a dime? Have you ever thought about that? Why do you think price will just turn on a dime without even, even you don't have no clue why? Well, my theory is, is because, because since pretty much the world's financial system, okay, is basically based off of the U.S. dollar and the breaking down of the, the four quarters you know, $25, $25, you know, uh, th excuse me, $1,000, uh, $250, $250. They're all even uh, a, a nice, easy to program mathematical calculation that the, their bank's computers can use, okay, to set these, set these points where a, ahead of time, before price action actually gets up there, they can set 
these uh, price points where they're going to dump huge amounts of money to, to make reversals. And I know that the hedge, big hedge funds in that they know about um, these specific numbers, right? Even though there's nothing written in the history books and there's no, uh, you know, you know, there's no big name guru out there that says that this is true, right? But if it isn't true, wasn't true, then why is it that so many times that price bounces right off these numbers? Why is it? Well, it's because the computers, the mathematical algorithm that the computers use, they have to have predefined areas programmed in advance so that when price action gets to these points that they have programmed into their computers, they can dump huge amounts of money and push it the other way real quick, right? You see, so many people in the industry want to teach people how to trade price action. You ever heard that saying, okay, you know, I'm a trader because I trade price action. Well, and I ask them, okay, so, you know, what is price action? If you don't pay attention to the price first, right? Well, it's like when you have a hammer next to a doji and a, a shooting star, you know, the candles are bouncing. That's the action. But, okay, so where does the price come in? Well, uh, you have to go to the next previous candle top. Well, why do you think those candle tops are forming? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, don't bother me. You should bring this quarter series stuff to me and uh, you make me like uh, like an idiot to all my other all my other students, my people that I teach. I just going to stick with what I know. Stop trying to pee on my stump, right? <laughs> but it's the truth. You know, these, the, the, everything is controlled by specific number of price points. And I never really realized it until I actually, about eight years ago now, nine years ago, I had that book from Ilian Yotov, The Quarter Series, and I actually programmed by taking horizontal, I mean, Right now, I only have like one, two, three, four, five quarters or five 1,000 pip ranges. But I did what I did originally was I would have to go. I actually took this. <laughs> you can even imagine this. You know, I would go from like point z 0 0.1. Okay. And I'd make horizontal lines and color them. And I put every single one of the lines in, you know, to a point where by the time I was done, okay, I had, you know, 10,000, <laughs> I had, I had 10,000 um, points, you know, which was actually basically, um, you know, 10, uh, 10, no, actually it was more than that. God, it was so long. Anyways, then I found out a guy who could help me do this, and he charged me 35 bucks, <laughs> and he made an indicator. And uh, I, uh, when I first started, uh, you know, hanging out on Facebook, posting M's and W's, and on Facebook and that against these large quarter points, nobody had known knew what the quarter series was, hadn't even seen it. I actually made a mistake of selling, uh, like. A lifetime license to the quarter series indicator, 35 bucks, right? I just sold a couple, about 10, 10 indicators. It's called the Chris indicator. You probably see it out there. And then next thing I know, this like there's thousands and thousands of them floating around on the Internet. But, hey, if you don't know how to trade these, I mean, it's great for everybody to have it, you know, but you got to know what, they, what the number lines represent and you got to know how to trade it, right? So there are some very specific uh, trades, okay, that in the book, The Quarter Theory, okay, Ilyan Yotov talks about, like the center point trade. Okay, he has very specific guidelines. When a pair is rising and it breaks a large quarter point and it reaches uh, either a hesitation zone or a center point preceding a large quarter point, he actually has specific guidelines, okay, for how 
to uh, trade with the numbers. And he's, he talks about the specific number of pips that you're going to want okay, to use for a stop loss. A lot of times they're fairly large, you know, 50, 75, 100 pips or so. So what I did was once, you know, after I had uh, uh, been involved in another program and I learned about you know, the right time of the day to look for a trade and this and that, and, you know, I was trying to find a way to justify, you know, why I, I, I'm going to sell, okay, because I happen to see a W pattern, uh, an M pattern at the right time of the day. One of the things I really realized was that when I put these price points, okay, uh, on the chart, I found that it gave me greater confidence of as an area to hide my stop behind. It gave me a predefined, you know, stop loss and a predefined uh, take profit, right? And it was just a natural, right? So to make a long story short, guys, the quarters theory, I believe, I can't prove it, but all you got to do is just look at the charts and, you know, you be the judge. Now, within the uh, large quarters, every 1,000 pips, there's four quarters of 250 pips each. Okay, we go down here to the smaller time frames. Okay, we also have what's called the small quarter points. Okay, and you can, if you don't have them turned on, you can go down here to where it says show small quarters. Click it's true. And I also always like to try, I mean, I have the predefined settings in dimensional gray, but sometimes it's nice just to put it on, you know, like a like a purple or something like that, which is something completely different, right? But within um, within the um, quarter series, okay, there's also we have what's called the large quarters, but then we also have what's called the small quarters, right? Now, the small quarters takes a 100 pip range, okay, and that's signified here by this blue line, which is 1.83000, and this one here, which is 1.8200. So there's 100 pips between here and here. So it breaks, small quarters breaks, takes a 100 pip range and breaks it down into four quarters of 25 cents each, 25 pips each, right? So in the big overall big scheme of things, okay, the large quarter, uh, the large quarters rule, right? Uh, the small quarters don't really mean squat, but when you get down to the inch or day, okay, um, <laughs> they actually do play out. Look, here, it's cycled right down, broke this hesitation zone, and it tried to break this small quarter point at 81.50. Okay, and guess what? The low of the candle was 81.52. Okay, that candle low, 81.52. Okay, this number, 81.50. So why didn't it come down to 81.50? Why did it bounce at 81.52? Right? Well, because if they did, they leave a footprint for everybody to know. Right? Everybody else looks at the candles like that. We look at the candles like this. We know that that um, we know what the power of these numbers are. If we use the small quarters on an intraday day basis, right? You can you can really zero in your stops. You can hide your stops. You wanted to buy right here, which um, uh, I did, by the way. At the start, I, I got up during the uh, New York New York session, and it made this big, huge push down. I saw this small quarter point. I saw that, and this was a 15-minute. I actually looked at it on the on the five-minute when I was entering the trade, but but uh, I knew that the pair had already dropped. Uh, let's see. Okay, so for the day, I knew that the pair had. It had made a move, an, uh, a uh, daily range of 
damn near 190 pips. I knew that the average ADR was 177. I knew that it wasn't going to keep on going down forever. And so what I did was I watched this and I watched this and it made this big lash push right here. And it I actually went down here. Here I can take, I'll take this to the uh, one minute time frame and I'll take this one to the, um, let's see, I guess I can't because I don't have this one set up with the small quarters, but um, here, let's take it down here like this. So here's a 15 minute. So there, there was a 15 minute, there was a 15 minute, okay, and here is the five minute, okay, from today. And this is what I was watching. I saw it go all the way down here, and once it got right down here, and it stalled out just a little bit, I bought it, and I put my stop loss right below this number here. What was my stop loss? I got in like right there. I had a 14 pip stop. My stop was below this number, 14 pip. Okay, what happened? Well, it went up 25, 50, 75, 100 pips. 100 pips, okay, with a 20 pip stop. Okay, now I, why did I take that trade? Okay, well, number one, it was the end of the Asian, uh, in, end of the New York session. The pair had already exceeded the average ADR. I I, I knew it wasn't going to keep on going down forever. And because the market maker pattern, which I'm sure uh, everybody knows the market maker pattern. Here, let me see if I can uh, see here if I can, I can uh, find that for you guys. Market maker pattern. Daily cycle. All right. I have so much junk here. Anyways, everybody needs to know what the daily cycle. I'm sure everybody does. If you don't, I'm going to uh, let me pull up my uh, pre a presentation on this. I want to make sure that. Uh, let's see here. daily cycle okay so everybody knows you guys have watched my training videos on this but but basically the day daily cycle looks something like this Asian accumulation session moves to the low Cycles up, ends the day in consolidation, usually 25 to 50 pips off the high of the day. Okay, it's going to always do, no matter if it's trending strongly down or strongly up, every single day you're going to see a retracement off of the high of the day and or off of the low of the day. Okay, and typically it'll happen during the start uh, uh, somewhere after the New York session because... That's pretty much where the day ends, right? So, so what I'm saying is I knew that I knew that the pair was going to end end the day, okay, at least 25 to 50 pips off of the low of the day. Well, it actually cycled up the first time, 
and I actually got out when it bounced off of this uh, large quarter point. And then the pair just came right back down, and it's just been sitting there. But, but if you guys get to the computer late and and you're not able to catch the new the London session, right? And you get up during the uh, uh, New York session, right? Don't just jump in because long because you think that this pair is going to reverse. You know you want to see some a little bit of um, consolidation. Now you can see it real clearly. Okay, not know so much on a 15 minute time frame, but you can see it fairly clearly. Okay, on the five minute time frame, and that was the entry right there. So. But I knew this number was here. I knew the, the strength of it. My stop loss was just below this number. I bought it somewhere about right there. And then from there, it just, you know, just kind of just meandered around. Then all of a sudden, boom, and I was out of the trade. So use these numbers to your advantage. You know, don't necessarily worry so much about whether, um, I mean, sure, it's a counter trend trade, but there's a reason why I took, the trade number one okay and i always say okay if you're going to take a counter trend trade make sure you're at least 50 pips away from the 50 ema right which i was 97 pips away that was another one of the deciding factors why i took it right first deciding factor i had already seen okay three levels of drop right i can see three levels of drop clearly in it the video in the interday trend, okay, talks about this. First thing you look for, and when you're trying to do a reversal trade, okay, you want to try to find three levels of drop, right? Okay, first, sometimes, okay, they can they can take it an extra level. They can maybe push it down four levels, but most of the time, it's three levels. So I can see from the high here. The pair dropped. There's one level, okay? And you can see that by the pins to the low here where it cycled back up and then came back down. So this is basically, actually, you could say, okay, so so this is, that's one level of drop from the high of the day, right? And then th it comes down here. There's one more level of drop. There's two levels of drop. That's what they do when they, mess up with when they um to, to mess with the minds of all the retail traders okay the psychological aspect of a trader is they see the first move and they think oh gosh i don't know if it's if i should really do it the trend's up you know what the trend's up uh i'm looking for a, a, a pullback and i want to buy okay well guess what Here's the pullback, and you buy it. Well, you know what? Sorry, guys. We had another plan for you. So now they, they pushed it down one more time. This this trader here that, um, you know, the trader, first off, the trader here gets stopped out who went long, okay, because it it fell. He was thinking he was, you know, buying off of the, the 200 EMA or such. And then the pair cycled up, bounced off the 200 EM, uh, the 50 EMA. It made another level of drop. And then guess what? So now the trader is looking at it, and he's saying, "Okay, well, I see a second level. Maybe this thing is going down. I'm going to wait for the next big move, and then I'm going to get in." Guess what? Guess what happens? Psychological aspect. The numbers of three. That's why I say in my training videos, coming out of the Asian range into the New York set London or the London session, you want to look for three quick pushes to the high. You want to see them set the trap, hold the level for 60 to 90 minutes, and then trade with them, right? Because they're trapping traders long because they have already the preconceived idea or the, uh, they, they were told by the head guru, right? The Wizard of Oz, okay, that, that stands up amongst all the computers, and he sees how many, you know, trillions of dollars are long and how many millions of dollars are short. And they're saying, okay, guys, well, we got to take some of this money back from these long traders. 
So we want you to reverse it. And that's what they did. But guess what? They came down and they dropped it three levels. Well, I knew that I knew that it wasn't going to keep on going down forever, right? So I saw this third level of drop. Okay, so that was my one, my uh, first confluence of events that I saw. Second confluence of events, the ADR is only 100. Well, at this point, I think it was like 160, but it already dropped 190. So it was way past the average daily range, 190. So that was my second confluence of events, right? And um, the third one was is that it was, you know, it was about an hour after the start of the New York session, and what I did, what did I do? Okay, so I went down to the small time, smaller time frame, okay, and I waited, I waited. I wanted to see on the smaller time frame and this TDI on a smaller, the five minute, it did confirm it. That's how you get into these trades with a 10 or 20 pip stop. You take 50 or 75 pips out of the trade. You call it good. In, in, and uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot. You have to be patient. Okay. But if you think about it, you know, how big, you know, how big of a position can you take with a 20 pip stop and a 50 pip gain compared to you know a 50 pip a 50 pip stop or a 75 pip stop right this is what i want you guys to focus on and honestly the only way that you can catch these kinds of trades of course this is this is this is this is, again it's not something that i would Trading against the trend is not what I typically uh, preach, right? Oh, another confluence of events. I was at least 50 pips away from the 50 EMA. At least 50 pips away. I was actually 90 pips away. That's, so it was like four confluence events. That's what made me take that trade. So the whole goal, guys, and it's not something that you can really put a signal out because it happens... I mean, it happens in a split second, and by the time everybody gets their signals in and gets their trades taken, they they're always going to be off the um, mark by at least 25 to you know 15 pips, 15 to 25 pips, right? 